Welcome to our review on making crude oil more useful. So we've already looked at crude oil in our previous lesson and now we need to understand a little bit about how we can make it a little bit more useful to us. So first thing we need to understand how we get this oil. So we know that it was buried very far under the sea many millions of years ago as it's formed. And what we find is in order to get to that oil, we've got to drill down through the impermeable rock it's trapped under. So we use these oil wells to do that. Once we've drilled down, then we pump it back to the surface and it can be loaded onto tankers to be transported to oil refineries where it can be processed. We do need to think about some of the problems associated with this transport and extraction of oil. So the first group are the environmental problems. So what we'll find here is that we can every so often have one of these oil spills occurring, either at the oil well or as we're unloading those tankers. So if we get an oil spill, that's one of those environmental problems. The second one is when it's actually being transported around in the oil tankers, which are the big ships carrying huge amounts of oil, then they could sink or run aground and at that point some of the oil could leak out from the tanker itself onto the sea and cause an oil slick. Now anytime we spill oil then we're at risk of harming wildlife because what it will do is it can get onto the birds wings and stop them being able to fly and create lots of problems with our fish as well. We do have a solution that we can use to try to help with this which is that if we get an oil slick we can spray detergent across the actual oil slick itself and that will make it break up. But the big problem with doing that is that those detergents, those chemicals that we're using, can also damage the wildlife themselves. Our next problem comes under the heading of energy security. So if we think about where most of the oil actually comes from, it tends to be the countries in the Middle East. So they're our largest producers of oil. But when we consider where it is in the world that actually uses the most oil, so the consumers of it, then the biggest consumers are the USA and some of the European countries like us in the UK. So what we actually find here is we're quite reliant on these Middle Eastern countries to provide our oil. So we've got to import large amounts of it to meet our demands. So that means that if those oil producers reduce our supplies or decide to raise the prices, there's not a whole lot we can do about it. Another problem we've got in terms of the security of our energy is the fact that oil wells will run dry in the future. So what we're going to find there is, even though there are other sources of oil, then they're not easy for us to get at. They're very hard to exploit. So that creates a problem in terms of how much oil we've got left at our disposal. So obviously if we're thinking about what we're using oil for, in terms of it as a fuel, we can actually develop alternative fuels there and we're in the process of doing that. So that one's not such a big problem. Our greater problem comes when we consider the petrochemical industry. So if you think about everything that we use made of plastic today, those plastics come from crude oil and those are the things that can't easily be replaced. Our next problem is the whole issue of supply versus demand. So what we'll find is that the actual demand for some of these fractions is much greater than the supply we get from fractional distillation. So if you have a look at the little graph on the right there, it gives you the percentages of all those different fractions. The orange bar is the demand and the blue bar is the supply. So what we can see there is if we have a look at LPG for at the very top there, the demand for LPG is greater than the actual supply we've got. So that just tells us that we don't get enough LPG just from fractional distillation to meet the demands. Same can be said for petrol and diesel. However, when we come to those lower fractions, the paraffin, the heating oil, the fuel oil and the bitumen, we can see we've got a greater supply than demand. So they do like to ask you about this every so often with a six mark question, giving you a bit of information like that about supply and demand and ask you about the problems. So if you talk about the fact that some of those fractions are not being produced in high enough quantities to meet the demands, and then obviously we can go on to talk about the solutions to that. One thing we can do in order to meet that actual demand is we can carry out a process called cracking. 
So cracking converts large hydrocarbon molecules into smaller, more useful hydrocarbon molecules. In order to do this, we need two things. We need a catalyst and we need a high temperature. So what we can see in the bottom right is an example setup of the equipment you should have used in class to do this experiment. So what we've got in our test tube there is a catalyst. You've also got your mineral, which is going to be soaked in paraffin. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to heat that strongly with a Bunsen burner. And as a result of that, what we're going to see is the large hydrocarbon molecules of paraffin are going to be split up into smaller, more useful ones. Because as we're heating it over the catalyst there, then what we're going to find is as it comes through the tubes into our two different test tubes there, we're going to collect the liquid and a gas, which are going to be the smaller hydrocarbons. So I've given you an example of an equation you could see here. So if we start with octane, which is a large hydrocarbon, if we heat it up in the presence of a catalyst, then we're going to end up with hexane and ethene. So giving you the symbol equation underneath so you can see how that splits. And remember, the whole purpose of cracking is to help match the supply to our demands.